after 10 years of being in power non-stop, it's very difficult for any leader to come across as being completely fresh. But Prime Minister Modi in that interview comes across as reassured, he's very measured, trying to compare his actions with the promises and claims of the opposition. This is his first big televised interview this campaign season to try and deconstruct what he's saying and also what he's not and how this is likely to be interpreted by the Indian voter right ahead of the first phase of polling. I'm joined on this broadcast by my colleague India Today's consulting editor Rajdeep Sardesai. With us also is uh, political analyst and author Ashutosh. Uh, we've got uh, representing the ruling Bharatiya Janata Party, its sp spokesperson Ajay Alok. Mohan Kumar Amanglam represents the Congress and we've got Raghav Avasti, political analyst who's with the BJP. Rajdeep, to you first, because this is five years after his previous uh, round of interviews that the Prime Minister is doing a 78-minute uh, interview. What stood out? You know, to me, he just comes across as very calm. You know, there's almost like the sage-like aura that he's seeking to project by being very calm and reassured in what he's saying. What stood out most to you, Rajdeep? Look, this is a Prime Minister, clearly, who believes that uh, 2024 is almost a done deal. This is a Prime Minister, therefore, who exudes the confidence of someone who feels it's uh, almost certain that he will be the next Prime Minister, which is why he's talking of a 100-day plan of what he's going to do once uh, he gets re-elected, re not if he gets re-elected. And I thought it was interesting at the very end, he spoke about this election is for the future, for 2047. So those who are first-time voters will be the beneficiaries in 2047. So clearly, Rahul, it's, a, it, it's someone speaking with that confidence, which perhaps was not there to the same extent in 2014, was there to some extent in 2019, but now he seems to believe he's almost invincible. I mean, he doesn't address some of the tough questions of our times, particularly questions related to unemployment, which I think is going to be a critical challenge for any government, not just this government, but for any government. He doesn't really address the issue of cooperative federalism. He talks about it, but the reality on the ground is different. He speaks about the enforcement directorate and says that, look, three, only 3% 3 of the cases are against politicians. Look at the number of other cases and assets seized. But the truth is, out of that 3%, 95% are opposition leaders. So there are elements which you could argue with. He speaks about Parivar Vad. I'm just back from Karnataka where they've tied up with the JDS. H.D. Uh, Kumaraswamy and H.D. Devagauda, who was called the father-son combination. Uh, he talks about the DMK and says, why is the Congress aligning with an anti-Sanatan Dharma party, forgetting that the Vajpayee government had the same DMK with the same ideology as its prime ally. So he can at times uh, not tell you the full truth, but I think <coughs> he comes with the confidence of someone who's offering a positive agenda. I think the difference, Rahul, between Prime Minister Modi and the opposition at the moment is simply this. The opposition has been unable to set a narrative on a sustained basis. The Prime Minister has been able to convey that this election is about 2047. You could argue he's changing the goalposts from 2022 New India to 2047 Amrit Kal, but at least Rahul, he's offering what he believes is a vision for the future. And I think that is critical, uh, particularly for a younger voter. And he kept talking about that first time younger voter. So I think this is a Prime Minister confident of his, of his victory, or of what he believes will be an eminent victory, but also uh, unwilling to really talk about some of the negatives. Like, you know, Mr. Modi is a feel-good politician, so when you end the interview, you end up feeling a sense of positive energy. That's what is his biggest strength. Ashutosh, he's coming across as being so calm that there is no sense of desperation, alarm or unease. It's almost as if here's a man who's saying, listen very carefully to every word I say because I intend to do everything I say. And that's the message that he's trying to communicate to the Indian voter. What stood out to you in this first interview? See, Rahul, you, you call him uh, calm, but I think there is a lot of turbulence uh, within his, uh, his calmness. And uh, because in 2014, 2019, uh, I had seen the Prime Minister... Uh, setting a kind of narrative but this time this is the first time i'm witnessing that in uh, before even the first phase of election is started he's talking about the muslim league he's talking about the mughal sultanate he's talking about the sahjade he's talking about sultan and uh, he's talking about uh, about uh, ram mandir and all that 
if i remember correctly in 2014 probably in assam he made a statement something on these lines in the hindu muslim lines and 2019 uh, probably once or twice he did it but here he's 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 starting a campaign with that so i see a lack of narrative on behalf of the a lack of narrative from the prime minister itself in this in this interview also uh, he's talking about about electoral bonds but has he answered the question about the secrecy why 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 secrecy why state bank of india was not willing to disclose uh, before 30th of june and when you asked by the supreme court the within 24 hours they did it second point is now it's not about about opposition has also got the electoral bond yes opposition has got the electoral bond uh, because the, the uu made the law the government has made the law so everybody was entitled for that but what about this the question with the moot question was that how can the bjp uh, take uh, take 5 crores from a person who was arrested 5 days before and this is this is the real real issue about the electoral bond the electoral bond about secrecy is is is, is an understatement in that sense but electoral bond where Uh, the the those who are who are giving donations uh ed was attaching the properties okay. can can let us say i want to respond to what ashutosh is saying that beneath that outward uh, assertion of calm is an internal anxiety ashutosh says look at the references to the muslim league shehzada sultan ram mandir he seems to suggest this is a government and a prime minister that is on the path to try and polarize the electorate how do you respond to this ajay alok well ashutosh is in full within his rights to make a comment but i guess he has not listened to the prime minister interview carefully otherwise he wouldn't have commented on electoral bonds because prime minister very clearly mentioned that when people businessmen used to give, come to us to give money they refused to give us money by check because they had the fear that if we give you by check the ruling party or the opposition may be a problem or may be a cause of concern so they never wanted to give it from check and then came the off idea of this electoral bonds so i guess before making any passing any comment you must listen properly to what prime minister says secondly being a ruling party and in our manifesto when we talk of uniform civil code which is there in the constitution which is there as a constitutional entity and when our opposition party <coughs> gets out with a manifesto which says that we are going to strengthen the personal law we are going to enhance them we will not oppose we will give full statehood to jammu kashmir we will not oppose and in a way indirect mention of abrogation of article 370 then the prime minister has to talk about muslim league has to talk about shehzada because the whole manifesto of the congress and the other parties reflects a clear cut mindset or destabilizing the country mohan kumar avangal respond to what ajay alok is saying getting volatile because within the one place where the prime minister yeah. seems to portray rahul gandhi as being highly immature is where rahul gandhi says if i come to power i'll remove poverty and the prime minister says these people have been in power for 5 6 decades they couldn't remove po- poverty in all the time that they were in power and rahul gandhi seems to think he has some kind of a magic wand and to most people who are watching you know the manner in which the prime minister takes apart rahul gandhi's argument you know would sound quite convincing there is no magic wand with which rahul gandhi can make poverty disappear now it depends on how you define poverty because as far as this government is concerned if you listen to the niti ayog or the chairman of the niti ayog we've already eliminated poverty as far as multi dimensional poverty goes whether it's 11% or later on the comment made or the statement made on it being 5% less than 5% are poor so what is poverty first let's define that and what mr gandhi said is the scheme that we're talking about in our manifesto which is 1 lakh to the woman head of the household every year will help us bring people above the poverty line thereby eliminating poverty to that extent and every government has built on the government before now let me respond to what ajay alok said he talked about restoration of statehood of jammu and kashmir as if it's a negative it's a supreme court order and you have promised to do it as soon as possible as well as far as restoration of 370 there's no mention of that in the manifesto so please don't misrepresent what our manifesto says and stick to what you're going to say now i will agree with my friend ashutosh who said that there was a bit of turbulence and i'll say that i'll tell you why now frankly he should be as calm as possible because this interview is not very dissimilar than the earlier interviews is done where it's entirely scripted rajdeep talked about some questions he didn't answer ashutosh did as well well they weren't asked of him why would he answer them we have gone from talking about mangoes in 2019 to musk in 2024 there's no mention of manipur there's no mention of the really important issues that 
people are upset about no, but can i just pause you there for a moment because when some politician finish. sitting in the opposition says the interview is scripted rajdeep that's always a tough one uh, because you know he's taken questions for 78 questions asked why weren't the hard questions asked you know, I mean, and why wasn't he questioned on electoral bonds for example bonds, when sonia gandhi was interviewed said, how many tough questions did she answer now that's a very from the perspective of the journalist who's asking the questions he's trying to do as good a job as is possible given the circumstances and Minister ask whatever compared. questions can be asked that's always a very very tricky situation guys the no no it's a problem how can you convince the opposition that it's a tough yeah, interview no no no, 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 here, no, no look, look no no the truth of no, no, the job. truth of the matter is the truth of the matter is that we do not want to make our politicians feel uncomfortable across the line that you know that's bad journalism it's our fault i remember so you know interviewing sonia gandhi and before the interview famously being told she won't take political questions which is what you, you know, got trolled quite badly for that and i got trolled but the truth of the matter is most of our politicians most of our politicians are unwilling to take the tough questions i agree with mr kumar mangalam he should the prime minister should be asked tough follow up question for example on manipur the prime minister How should be asked i mentioned sanatan yeah, dharma yeah. Vajpayee's government ties up with the same BJP with the same ideology. How uh, you know that's an obvious follow-up question. Uh, I mentioned the enforcement directorate. Ninety-five percent of the three percent are opposition leaders. It's an obvious follow-up question. The uh, Chief Justice of India is removed from the uh, from the panel on the Election Commission's appointment. It's an obvious. One. We don't ask them. I'm not trying to claim that I'm I'm, I'm any different. Most politicians today t- take strip, very scripted interviews. I was delighted to be in Karnataka because it's one of the few states you can just go to a politician, whether Sidharamaya, Kumaraswamy, any of them, and ask whatever questions you want. But there are all too few. politicians even state leaders round you know better are also now reluctant to ask answer the tough questions this is the prime minister setting his agenda on his terms let's be clear now is it the job of us journalists to allow a leader to do that it's questionable i would prefer i i, I mean at the end of the day i guess as a result you won't get an interview unless you're really willing to push him there was a time and mr modi uh, let me be honest round people don't know this 25 years ago used to take whatever question you wanted and hit you back as good as you got that was mr modi pre 2001 when he was not even the chief minister of gujarat things have changed now not just him but across the board mohan kumar mangalam may agree may disagree with this but where does sonia gandhi take the tough question where does rahul gandhi take any questions at all in where, an where, interview when was the so last time he did an interview when was the last time he did an interview when was the last time he did an interview how many when was the last time he did an interview Let, yeah, I'll respond to you. It doesn't have to be an interview. How many press meets has press conferences he done? Completely unscripted press conferences around Bharat Jodo Yatra. Which question has he not taken? You are welcome to ask any question in those press meets. None of no, it no, was when scripted. When has he taken? And Please ask interview. your colleagues if you okay, are. Okay, let Raga Bhavasti come in on Why this. Why does the format have to be an interview? Uh, He but you can't so determine does the today. does the interview and the fact Possibly that he is answering question questions for seventy eight right? minutes. Raga Bhavasti address the charge. of the prime minister answering questions because he can say it's a free flowing interview 78 minutes i asked all that was thrown at me i think uh, most of the issues that the opposition has been talking about i think the biggest talking point these days electoral is electoral bonds so there was a question in relation to electoral bonds there were other questions also uh, in relation to the election commissioner and everything and uh, mr modi has answered them to the best of his ability there are some people who are sitting on this panel who today sound holier than thou i still remember they were asking sonia gandhi about her culinary preferences and what she likes to cook and eat so i think rakhavasti uh, rakhavasti you know i i am an open book i have given you mr avasti you must be direct i have told you the circumstances before the interview she said she will not take political questions i am very clear about it that was the, that that sonia gandhi is no different in many ways she has not taken the tough political questions that does not stop mr modi from taking the tough political question on electoral But bonds for example you, you would ask started, the obvious sorry. question mr. about the so called quid pro quo mr avasti let's not be economical with the truth just giving I'm first principles economical. first principles on electoral bonds is not an answer to a question electoral bonds is a complex issue that requires hard yes, cross examination why did the state bank of india virtually deny uh, virtually lie there i use the word to the supreme court of the country these are questions to be asked mr avasti as far as electoral bonds are concerned electoral bonds were available to everyone all the political parties and i think sure. if you look at uh, the number of mps and mlas the bjp has 
So vis-a-vis -vis that number, the BJP actually didn't receive that much money by way of electoral bonds. Per capita legislator, the TMC and the Congress received more money. So it's a bit unfortunate when the BJP is singled out as if other political mm -hmm. parties took a principled stand and said that they will not accept any funds via electoral No, but bonds. Ashutosh, on the question so of whether the I questions are tough, whether it's a real interview, mm -hmm. that's always a tough one. You've been a journalist yourself. Anybody who didn't do the interview is convinced that the interview is a fudge. The one who did the interview is so difficult to ask what can happen. You can never plea, you can never have Rahul Gandhi or Mohan Kumar Manglam give a certificate saying, oh great interview. They're never going to do it. I mean, if it's a Rahul Gandhi interview, they'd love it. If it's a Modi interview, they'll think it's rubbish. No, no, I'll say Rahul, Rahul. Uh, I can say that I'm I'm lucky enough because I never interviewed a sitting prime minister. I interviewed two prime ministers who who, who became prime minister after two days. Mr. Uh, hmm. Manmohan Singh, he became the prime minister and uh, uh, two days before I interviewed him and also the SD Devagoda. Forget about it. See, I I I'm I'm not, I'm not, I have no quarrel with the, with the Mr. Narendra Modi not giving interview to me or to Raj to Rajdeep Sardesai. That's not that's his democratic right. He's 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 he's, he's within his right to exercise that right. The point is simple. The point is. The biggest, the biggest issue which is facing the country right now is unemployment. And the Prime Minister should be quizzed on that. The biggest issue is a price rise. The Prime Minister should be quizzed on that. The corruption has increased in the last five years. CSDS uh, survey is clearly underlining this. And the, 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 the corruption is increased. The price rise is increased as well. And, and also, uh, 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 the, the joblessness has increased in the last five years. These are the issues on which the Prime Minister should be asked, should be quizzed. And if the Prime Minister has not answered those questions, then you could have blamed blame the Prime Minister. If those questions are not asked, how can you blame the Prime Minister? So issue is very simple. It's, it's not about Rahul Gandhi and it's not about Narendra Modi. It's about the mindset. I have, I have, I have, I have uh, run, run a channel. I never got a call from the Prime Minister's office that why are you running the story. I never felt threatened that I could lose my job. Or, or none, none of our, of our reporters were, 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 were threatened that they could, they could, they could lose, lose their job. Today that is not the same, but let's not get into that. The fact of the matter is the issue about the electoral bond is the issue about electoral bond is not who's getting how much money. Okay. The issue is the issue is the use of the quid pro quo, which 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 is direct relationship. Five days before the man is arrested, now after five days he he he, he buys can a bond. Can I, can I and and of, Ajay Alok, Ajay Alok, respond to what Ashutosh is saying on the issue of unemployment price rise. The sense that the Prime Minister didn't communicate enough about what was being done to deal with these issues. That those issues, as we've seen in recent surveys, are front and center for the Indian voter and they weren't addressed head on. <coughs> when Prime Minister was addressing the first time voter, he addressed on a whole range of issues. The point is that Ashutosh has not listened to the interview properly. That what kind of a path he wants to take to India on. And what are the aspirations of the young India? And particularly on the employment, job, each and everything, please go through our, uh, from, uh, what we have released, the Modi ki guarantee. You will learn to know which are the key sectors we are addressing to, which will create employment and which will create a good health of uh, employment. See, the problem is that if you have a biased, biased mind, you cannot be very true to your judgment. This is the problem with Ashutosh, so I can't help it. But the fact is, again, that a prime minister should be quizzed, prime minister should be quizzed. The prime minister's interview is for not for you. The prime minister's interview is for the nation. The nation wants to know how this prime minister wants to take the nation forward in the next five years. You can keep on criticizing on every amount of time, but every different sector is what we have added. Today also he spoke about his meeting with Elon Musk and the potential of EV generating employment and put an environmental hazard and everything. The kind of efforts being done in agricultural sector, other sector, the railway sector. All the huge infrastructure we are going to build upon. These are all generating in this will and are generating employment. But your mind is stuck. Well, can I, so can we I can't help it? it actually. Okay. Uh, Ashutosh wants to come yeah, in and make a yeah, quick yeah. interjection. Ashutosh. Say, say Rahul, on the issue of uh, uh, manufacturing sector, let me, let me come straight with the data. 2000, 2010, the manufacturing, manufacturing sector has 17% contribution into the GDP. In 2022, it's just 13%. If your manufacturing sector is not improving, how will you create jobs? Forget about oh. it. Let's talk about, about, about joblessness. In 2023, it's 8.03%, the highest ever. In, the, in 2008, it was 5.41. In, 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 uh, in 2014, 
और और अदर 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 2013 5.41 5.42 5.44 5.44 5.44 5.46 the issue is the prime minister doesn't want to accept that there is an unemployed the huge unemployment the age 22 to 24 the the unemployment rate is 44 percent which is unimaginable if it, if the country is growing if if, if 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 manufacturing sector is growing if economy is growing why such a humongous joblessness in the country because if the prime minister chooses not to accept not to admit that there is a crisis how will you and 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 look at the manifesto i think this is one of the most sterile manifesto i've ever seen in the, during the election by any political party you compare that with the congress it looks at least it tries to answer the questions that there is an apprenticeship issue for the unemployment there is a there is a 50 percent reservation for the women in the, in the government job that might look very dreamy but at least there, the, the, the manifesto okay. tries to find answers. Let Raghav Avasti respond to Ashutosh's point that at least on the issue of unemployment, whether it is through jobs in uh, private sector or through quotas or through um, the apprenticeship program, the Congress, Ashutosh says, is trying to accept that unemployment is a problem and tell us what to do with it. Whereas in the BJP manifesto or from what you're hearing from the Prime Minister, there is no acknowledgement of just how real the problem is, given also the fact that recent data shows that even at the Indian Institute of Management and in the Indian Institute of Technology, India's premier educational institutes, about one third of the batch hasn't been employed at the end of the course. Let me answer this. I think if you want to tackle the problem of unemployment, the first thing that you need to have is industrialization. And I think if we look at the manifesto, when it talks about building highways, roads and airports, it's actually building the physical infrastructure that is necessary for robust economic growth. Jobs cannot be provided like handouts, and handouts cannot take the place of good economics and industrial policy and growth. So this socialist shibboleth is something that we really need to demolish, that uh, the government has, the, has some sort of a, a bounded duty to uh, provide jobs to everyone. Ultimately, it's industry, the private sector, and the government is there to facilitate. The government is definitely there to facilitate and ensure that there is a level playing field. And if you look at the kind of reforms in the legal sector that have been uh, spoken about, then it will uh, definitely help ease of doing business, enforcement of contracts, and so on and so forth. But this idea somehow that a job uh, which is uh, akin, which is on the pattern of a government job is some sort of an entitlement is something that really needs to be challenged and it's something that's outdated in Stalinist economics. Okay, I'm running out of time. Final words in terms of the messaging. I just want to add one Yes, thing. Ajay Alok. Ajay Alok, you know, respond to yeah. opponents You're who will say again. that the Prime Minister sounds a bit same old because people have been hearing him for 10 years. Therefore, there is that, that, that zing which was there in 2014, which is still there in 2019. The opposition will say, because he's been in power for that long. Is that a real concern? Do you think he's addressing that adequately? Ajay Alok. First of all, uh, yes, I'll definitely answer that. First of all, I'd like to remember Ashutosh again that in 2010, when he says that 22% GDP contribution was there for manufacturing, in 2010, our GDP was 76 lakh crores, sir, and it, it, if the growth was 22%, you think it was very much adequate. But today we have a GDP of 3.8 lakh crores, five time increase from 2010. And still we are maintaining a growth rate of 13%, like what you said. So which is better, 76 lakhs versus 22% or 3.8 lakh, lakh crore versus 13%? Okay. Please use your gray matters. And secondly, Prime Minister has not changed for the last 22 years. He's still the same. He's a man of development. He's a man of words. So when he says that you have to have clarity on your words, you have to respect your words, and you have to hold your words, then you should be accountable for your words. That means he means business. And people of this country understand. If people like Ashutosh and other opposition fellows don't understand, it's not our problem. And Prime Minister is not the one who keep on changing colors every election and who keeps on trying to launch and relaunch himself. That's an he's important already point. Settled, Let Ashutosh respond to Ajay Alok. There is a lot of difference. That there is a sense of continuity. He's not jumping around saying crazy and dramatic things because he doesn't need to. He has credibility built over 22 years. He thinks the people of India understand him. He thinks the, he understands the people, which is why he doesn't need to say dramatic things. People. And despite not saying crazy things, despite being calm and assured, he still is confident that people will vote for him, Ashutosh. 
आप म्यूट पे हो राहुल आजा आलोक इज सेलेक्टिवली यूजिंग डेटा इन 2004 द इंडियन जीडी इंडियन इट्स द साइज ऑफ द इकॉनमी वाज समथिंग अराउंड 56 बिलियन डॉलर व्हेन मनमोहन सिंह सिंह लेफ्ट ऑफिस इन 2014 इट वाज 1.86 ट्रिलियन डॉलर एंड एंड द ग्रोथ फ्रॉम द ग्रोथ फ्रॉम 2004 ला 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 I did not disturb Mr. Ajayalo. Please don't disturb me. So the growth was are almost 250 percent from one eight to three something like this. The growth from Narin Narin Modi's time is are almost 175 some 70 75 percent. So if if you are if you are comparing data relatively, don't pick and choose. The size of economy. If you say the Indian size of economy in 1975 and the compared today, it's not because of Mr. Narendra Modi itself. And I tell you, in 2018, I, I, I was just looking at the data. The unemployment rate suddenly jumped to the jumped jumped to the high 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 high, high, high ground for the simple reason because because without knowing without without understanding anything, you went for the demonetization. And that's why the economy, economy, economy got 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 disrupted. And then you uh, then brainlessly used uh, uh, the, the 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 GST. And that's where that's where the economy started uh, taking a different turn altogether, and that's where the joblessness has started getting high. The price rise got, got high. Prime Minister has never accepted that demonetization was a wrong thing, uh, was, 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 was a mistake on his part, or the messing up the GST was, was 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 wrong on his part. He never accepted it. But the fact is, till 2017, the economy was growing well. But why the, the economy has gone wrong? You know whether the economy is going wrong or not. Uh, Mohan Kumar Mangalam is ultimately something the only only the Indian voter one can line, decide. One, one second, Ajay. Let From me, the 19th of April, it's the voter who will decide. You know, you have a view, Ashutosh has a view. The Indian voter will give his view on it, and that's the view we must all respect. Absolutely, Rahul. Let me just make some quick points here. One, every government before this government has doubled our GDP in a decade. This is the only government that's failed to do it. Right? Real wages have stagnated. Household savings are down. This is recent data that's come out. So, if household savings are down, real wages have stagnated. You will obviously have contraction in consumption. And when there is contraction in demand and consumption, you will not have private investors join the party. And that's where I agree with my friend Raghav Avasti, which is that if you don't have private investment join the party, you will not be able to create jobs. Just burying your head in the sand and pretending it's not a problem. is not going to solve the issue and the prime minister in his entire interview and by the way i saw his entire interview it the level of border dash was next level he actually said that congress wanted the ram mandir not to be built so it could use it as a political issue if there's any party in this country that's used the ram mandir as a political issue to go from two seats to 90 something it's the bjp he wasn't asked about that he actually said that because tamil nadu is the first, going to um, polls in the first phase that people of tamil nadu are tired of the dravidian model or the tamil nadu regional parties they look at up and bihar and other states governed by the bjp and want to be like them Tamil Nadu has the highest gross enrollment ratio. Its per capita income is twice that of UP. I mean, there were no follow-up questions on these things, which are just like you know gimmies. Which is why I'm saying this was just another scripted interview. And I, you can take offense to that, but it was just too much out of there. None of the important questions were addressed. Like I say, unemployment, inflation. Ajay, hello. Final quality. words before I wrap up. Your final counter to Kumar Mangalam. well i would like to say first again to ashutosh that when you stammer while you speak that means you are not confident of yourself so if you are not confident of yourself please stop pitching the prime minister of this country and as far as my congress and as far as my congress goes congress friend goes as far as my congress friend goes as as far as my congress friend goes well, no it's not a joke it's a truth you always stammer when you speak lies i hope and as far as my congress friend goes well if it's a scripted interview you keep I on believing that, that keep on believing that but rahul I gandhi cannot give an interview this is also a problem i i, I also okay, know rahul I gandhi cannot give even a scripted interview because if any question is asked other than the syllabus other than the he syllabus the answer will be completely the, different he because he doesn't ahead, understand ahead. what is india he is still he is still looking so out of time india so no it is yeah. 5 second 5 second 5 okay, second very quick. ajay alok ajay alok need to apologize to those who are who are who are what challenged who have a speech impediment Yes, he she should apologize to them because he made fun of he them. He should apologize. That right those now. who are stammered, right. they are not confident. I think it's very sad, sad comment because it is coming from a, a spokesperson, national spokesperson of a. It's of not a, a sad party. comment. You, not, you, are, you, you, are, you do not know the, the subject and you are making basic allegation. I will okay. be wrong with your own data. Then let's let's stammering. wrap this up. The problem. From an opposition lens, no interview is good enough. From the government's lens, the prime minister has answered questions for seventy-eight minutes. what you made of the modi interview 
you decide. That's the way we deal with it on the news track. We don't tell you what to think. You've heard different points of view, as always on the news track. We leave it to you to decide what you thought of the Prime Minister's responses and the journalists' questions.